yet another milestone in placing the voices of persons with disabilities on a global platform. Various components that include mainstreaming, economic empowerment, inclusive climate change interventions, inclusive health, COVID-19 pandemic implications, and policy gaps have formed the menu at the Global Disability Summit for the year 2022. We believe in a disability inclusive future where all people with disabilities can fulfill their potential. A world in which having a safe home, attending school, earning a living and being valued contributors of their communities is the norm for people with disabilities rather than a distant dream. Looking at uh, marginalised communities as uh, problems that, uh, and issues that need solving, they, they can be um, refugees and people with disabilities, um, can, um, can be an asset to every community and country. Whether online or physical, we have attended the 2022 summit, but our shoulders as persons with disabilities are still heavy laden. Kwa wiki naweza kushona hata nguo mbili. Sasa inakuwa changamoto ni hiyo. Uh, I've also I've been working here and there to get a support and up to date for 9 years. I haven't received anything. Facing a lot of challenges. Like there's some uh, personal things that I'm using, like diapers, I'm using gloves to remove for long call, uh, using diapers for short call because I can't feel. So you find that those diapers are very expensive. One may ask and wonder why. Now, just arriving at the office of the National General Secretary of YWCA Kenya. Let's go in. My name is Deborah Olual Modi. I'm the National General Secretary of the Young Women Christian Association of Kenya. Looking at some of the commitments that were made in 2018, mm -hmm. uh, how would you say the journey has been thus far? I think uh, a lot has been done mm -hmm. and a lot has been left out. True. There are emerging issues mm -hmm. that have not been touched on. And these emerging issues are the ones we'd like to advocate for mm -hmm. in the GDS. Climate change, who's talking about people with disabilities? Nobody. Nobody. Yes. In conflict areas, what are, you know, what are the commitments mm -hmm. here? Inclusive programs, yes. But there is yet another hurdle to be averted, and that is even beyond the 2022 summit that has ended. The capacity of organizations for persons with disabilities to build evidence-based advocacy. So the gap YWCA is feeling is that it's actually helping to document, to build evidences of some of the issues, the challenges that they face, yes. to show, to confirm to the, even to the, their stakeholders, mm -hmm. the duty bearers, that these are the gaps. Yes. So YWCA, uh, in partnership with other organizations, and mm -hmm. one of them is Andy, yes. uh, Action Network for the the several yes. years, uh, that has come on board mm -hmm. to help us even document some of these best practices and the challenges. Yes. So that is something that will be used today, mm -hmm. tomorrow, and the days to come mm -hmm. in, the in the advocacy processes. Mm -hmm. Without adequate budgetary allocations, organizations for persons with disabilities will raise voices, but they will end there. The National Council for Persons with Disabilities here in Kenya plays an integral part in making sure that the commitments that were made by the Kenyan government back in 2018 in the inaugural Disability Summit are achieved. I am here to speak to Mr. Francis Anyenda. He is the Assistant Director of Public Communication here at the National Council for Persons with Disabilities. We realize that uh, sometimes this is not adequate yes. and we have been having regular meetings with national DPOs mm -hmm. and the aim is that we look at the role of the DPOs as we are aware 
uh, what we call DPOs or disabled person organizations, now they're called organization of persons disabilities. Their role is to do advocacy work. And we are saying that if they're able to build their capacity through our support, yes. then they're able to engage with the relevant uh, institutions and especially the parliament mm -hmm. and treasury. Mm -hmm. You will realize that for the last, uh, especially like last year, yes. we had a budget cut by 250 million shillings. Mm -hmm. When you have a budget cut of 250 million shillings, it means that you can't do much. Yes. Resources can only be allocated to data. In Kenya, it is not yet clear how many persons are of a disability. Now, the new system has a number of advantages. One, as I said, it's going to capture all different kinds of data that can be used for the purpose of planning. So if you, if you want to get, for example, the statistics of how many persons disabilities are from a given county yes. in terms of the type of disability, the age group, the economic status of those people, the social activities and so on, then you're able to get there. And then the second thing which is very critical is the timeliness of collecting that data. With challenges on collecting data addressed, data-driven advocacy will be scaled up and so that the great job on advocacy by organizations of persons with disability starts. In all this, policy support is key. And now in Kenya, the new Disability Bill 2021 is just about to become an act of parliament. Now, our current act was uh, passed in 2003, what we call the Persons with Disabilities Act number 14 of 2003. Uh, this is what, is what is in force right now. Uh, we began the process of reviewing it in 2014 with the view of aligning it with the CRPD, the Convention on Right of Persons with Disabilities, and of course our new constitution that was passed in 2010. Yes. Uh, and this has been uh, an effort that we have done through partnership with various stakeholders, uh, both the government, uh, persons with disabilities themselves, the civil society, and other stakeholders. And uh, through a lot of engagements, the, the bill, uh, as, as it is now, it's 2021 bill, yes. has already been uh, drafted by the AG mm -hmm. and uh, taken into, very, uh, into, into a number of engagements. And the, now the bill is the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. Our prayer is that uh, we want the bill to be passed by National Assembly, mm -hmm. the two parliaments, that is, before the parliament goes for permanent recess because of the general elections that, that are coming. We want more resources, uh, which the bill is proposing. Uh, we, we are also looking at uh, giving um, uh, you know, more mandate to the council so that it's, so that it's able to deliver on, on, on its mandate uh, more appropriately and, 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 and in, 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 in a very timely manner.